Hi everyone, Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uladu Narpadu. Today we're going to talk some more about the bodies, the sheaths, the mind, and the world. So let's take a look at the verse. The world which is seen is nothing other than the form of the five sense knowledges, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. Those five sense knowledges are sensations known to the five sense organs. Since the one mind, or the mind alone, knows the world through the five sense organs, say, without the mind, does the world exist? <laughs> This is the view of a self-realized being. This is the way someone like Ramana sees. In other words, the mind is proven to be false. Huh? Because we saw there are thoughts and thoughts and thoughts, but there's not any such thing as a mind. You cannot go and find, go into your brain and find this thing called a mind. Huh? Yes, you can see many different thoughts coming and going, like the frames of a movie or a television or video show. But you can't find any such thing called mind. Now, this is because the mind is an abstraction that we create. Just like, for example, you can say, the people. Huh? The people, what does it mean? Well, there's this person and that person and the other person and so many people, right? So it becomes the people. But you can't go anywhere and find the people. It's an abstraction. It's something we create. It's an idea only. That doesn't really exist. There's no concrete manifestation of it. Or let's say, for example, a corporation or a government. Well, you can say, well, here's, here's the, the buildings and here's the factory and here's all the workers doing their things. Huh? What do you mean there's no cor corporation? Well, no, there's no. There's a building. There's a factory. <laughs> there are workers. But where's the corporation? See, the, the idea of a corporation or a nation or so many things that we deal with every day are just handles. They're just uh, an abstraction that we use to refer to a collective of a bunch of actual things. They have no real existence. Yet we act and think as if they do. See, that's our insanity. That's our madness. That is our unenlightenment. The mind is like that. And also the world is like that. Uh, one of the verses a few episodes ago was basically saying that we see the world according to how we are. So how are we? Well, <laughs> we have this habit of rolling things up in these abstractions and then lighting them and smoking them. <laughs> so naturally we're, we're going to be affected by this and the, the insanity, the madness that, that affects us by getting high off of these abstractions is that we deal with words as if they're things. Words can even cause profound uh, emotional and even physical reactions in us. Huh? Look, it's a snake! No, it's just a rope. So, in that way, I, I think I brought up the example of graduation. Huh? After so many years of torture in school, you go to this ceremony and somebody puts a funny hat on you and gives you a piece of paper. And you feel, wow! Huh? But isn't it that you just stopped 
hitting yourself over the head with school? So you see, the reactions that we get to these abstractions are real. Just like when a person sees a tiger in a dream, he really becomes afraid. But as soon as he wakes up from the dream, it's like, oh, whew, it was just a dream. So the relief that we feel by coming out of illusory abstractions is so profound that it gives, a, how can I say, a memorable experience huh, of relief. And... Uh, that we look back on and we think, well, that was enlightenment. But what is it really? It's just that we stop beating ourselves up with these illusory abstractions. So the same thing is going on, like in a movie theater or watching a video where many, many still pictures are flashing on the screen in a very short time. And so our brain unable to cope with the flood of information, abstracts it into a story. Isn't it? A child going into a movie theater and seeing a movie is going to think that it's real. The child has no idea of the mechanism behind it, that there's a screen reflecting a projection which comes from a projector which is running a, a reel of film or a video program or something like that. <laughs> Here's a funny story. I remember when I was like not quite five years old. It was uh, Thanksgiving and I lived at my grandma's house. So the whole family would come on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now, this particular Thanksgiving, they were installing a television. The first television. And we had one of the first televisions on the block, as I recall. So my uncles are up there on the roof, you know, for hours, cursing, and <laughs> doing stuff, banging and getting things set up. Finally, they got the antenna up, you know, and uh, we could receive stations. And so after much fiddling and twiddling with the knobs, we saw our first TV program. And it just happened to be a program about the New York subway system, a documentary. So here I am, four, or almost five years old, not quite, seeing trains. <laughs> oh, it was great, you know. But because I was unaware of the whole infrastructure behind the whole thing, I thought we were really seeing trains. I thought, this is a great idea, man. You just twiddle these knobs and you get to see trains, right? <laughs> Not knowing that it's not so simple. So I was, uh, to put it mildly, very disappointed <clears throat> when the show ended and there were no more trains. <laughs> there was just this guy speaking about something or other. You know. How boring. I want the trains back. So I started twiddling the knobs. No, no, don't touch that. <laughs> so this is the way we are with the world. Just like the mind is a projection of many, many impressions coming in uh, through the senses, the world is like that too. We think there is a world. Just like the child in the movie theater or watching the TV thinks the, the, the trains are real and that we're seeing them at a distance or something. We think we see a world of solid things out there. Well, what are we really seeing? We're really seeing impressions reflected in consciousness. Sense impressions, that's all. We have no direct access. Even if there is a solid world out there, we have no way to know it because we don't have any direct access to it. Now I know you're going to bring up all this empirical evidence about science and blah, blah, blah. But what are those people seeing? <laughs> We know from quantum mechanics that the observer influences the system under observation. Every measurement changes its behavior. So what does that mean? That means that 
What we're seeing is what we set out to see. We're seeing a reflection of what, how we're looking. Just like if I look there out the window, I see trees and grass and animals and stuff. Uh, but if I look over here, I see, you know, shelves and clothes and stuff like that. If I look over there, I see something else. What I see is depending on how I look. Well, that's a very gross example, but on a more subtle level, the categories of possible things that can happen or exist in our minds pretty much determine what we're going to see. And if we happen to see something that is not in that list of categories, it won't register. We won't recognize it. We'll blow it off. We'll just throw it in the trash can. Oh, didn't recognize that one. Ah, it's not really there. You think that's a, a, an extreme? No. It happened in history. When the Spanish conquistadors came in their ocean-going galleons, and parked off the, the shore of Central America, the Mayans certainly saw them, but it didn't register because they had never seen an ocean-going ship before. So they just went on about their daily business like, oh, that's not really there. Huh? Maybe only a few medicine men or so had seen it or really recognize that, hey, this is something weird, you know? Similarly, when they got down off their ships with their horses and their armor, the people just had no defense against it whatsoever. There were hundreds of thousands of Mayans, but they were conquered by a cavalry division of no more than 500, the entire empire including up to Mexico City, was just steamrollered by a few ships full of conquistadors because the Mayans had no mental category for armored horsemen. They had never seen horses before, what to speak of armored soldiers, and they just freaked. They couldn't deal with it. Actually, they could have won. <laughs> They vastly outnumbered the invaders, but they couldn't deal with it, so they were steamrollered. Now, there's a, an invention. Elon Musk is working on neural lace. Huh? Oh, boy. He's worried about AI. But what about neural lace? It'll be the most invasive thing ever. You think that uh, it's a problem that governments are uh, watching the Internet. What about when they can watch your brain? Of course they're going to abuse it. Of course they're going to misuse it. Of course they're going to use it for controlling the people. That's what governments do. So <clears throat> all these things show that what we're seeing out there might be something or other, but the way that we're seeing it is not certainly not the way it is. We see according to how we look. So when we're expecting to see solid objects, time, dimensions, cause and effect, and so on, that's what we see. And our world is built on those abstractions. Consequently, when someone becomes self-realized and they understand that consciousness alone exists, they don't see that, that other world anymore. And that's why it's said that someone who is self-realized doesn't perceive the, the world. Huh? They perceive something all right, <laughs> but it's not the same world that other people perceive. Because what they're seeing is that, oh, there's some little overlay on consciousness. Huh? Just like, oh, there's some little overlay of bubbles of foam on the ocean when it hits the shore. It's inconsequential. 
don't take it serious. <clears throat> don't take it seriously. Because those bubbles can just be brushed aside and there's the ocean. You see? They're only temporary. They come and go. Not to worry. But this is how a self-realized person views the world. It's all software. It's just how we look at it. So don't get all entangled in it because at the end of the show, it's all going to go away. Huh? Om Tatsa. Om Harihi Om.